we have put on the recordings so good evening and welcome to uh, dy patil pratishthans institute for advanced computing and software development popularly known as iecsd akudi pune i would hand over the proceedings to mrs vaishali chikalkal chikalkar for the uh, webinar on java technologies over to you ma'am yes thank you keshav sir thanks rohit um good evening to all of you myself vaishali as rohit and sir intro introduced me so i am here taking care of your today session based on webinar on java technologies okay so let's start with this i will share my screen uh rohit can you stop your share so let me share my screen first is it visible all of you yes yes ma'am visible you can proceed yes okay fine okay so <clears throat> before starting this uh, what is java how we are going to do what we are going to do with java <clears throat> let me um, tell you the focusing things means which are the main focus point that we are going to discuss in today's webinar that is first of all what is object oriented programming right which we are going to call as a oops concept right then what is the structure of object oriented programming because as you are going to enter in a java you should know what is object oriented programming then we'll go with why java and what we can do with java okay so i will welcome you both whether technical or non technical background it is not going to affect that much if you have that willingness of learning a new thing learning a new technology so this is a very good platform for you <clears throat> okay so um, what is object oriented programming maybe some of you are aware with this object oriented programming concepts right so programmatically or definition wise it is a object oriented programming is a computer programming model that organizes software design around the data or the objects rather than the functions and logic might be very difficult for you to understand so let's see this with the help of example okay those who are having a background of programming or um, any kind of programming language let's suppose take a example of c programming right i hope you all are having a little bit knowledge or little bit information about the programming i want to create a very simple banking application and all of you are aware with this banking process and all so when we are going to visit any bank which is the uh, important thing which are the important operations that we are performing within a bank you can reply me in a chat box right so very first of all we are going to do the operation like withdrawing the money or depositing the money right okay so whatever the syntax and all let it be if you don't understand it's okay no issue but the thing is operations we are going to do here and that you all are aware with that okay so you will have a two way communication here interaction here <coughs> so you just reply me you in a chat box okay now here in if i'm going to take the example of c programming that is a very basic c programming application i am going to write a simple functionality for deposit amount whatever the business logic we all are aware with that adding the amount in your account balance increasing your balance and we have some withdraw functionality where what is my business logic business logic is going to deduct some amount yeah very good guys you all are responding a very best options account opening creating the account loan approval but we'll go with the basic thing now here this is the thing we are going to see why object oriented programming correct now 
on what we are going to do this all transaction is it account number everyone is going to have the account number and for that account number obviously we are going to have the balance <clears throat> right now if i am going to call withdraw function withdrawing particular amount from my account or from the balance let's suppose i am going to withdraw 5000 rupees from the existing balance now can i access this function here which is going to accept the amount yeah why not right now here see we just think on what will be the functions what will be the functions deposit is going to be the function withdraw is going to be the function and this functions are going to implement some business logic where business logic is going to add the amount and going to withdraw bid up the amount from the balance but if we see here can you tell me on whose account whose balance i am going to modify here with the help of adding the amount or with the help of subtracting the amount my question is will i get this account number and balance here here no not at all right because whatever the thing you declared inside the block will be private means it is inside block only yeah right so what i can do here is somewhere we have the concept called as global variable right those who are very new just try to understand this concept so what we can do here is instead of declaring it specific to a method what we are going to do is we are going to declare it for the entire program right and the scope get increase it is going to become more wider so everyone can access this and now surely balance i can access here balance minus amount yeah it is a deposit so plus the amount which i want to add and the similar type of business logic will be here for withdrawing the amount so i hope all of you got it right now this is very easy concept so i can access my modified balance with whatever the withdraw function or the deposit function anywhere i will be able to access it so that's okay where we focus we give the focus on the functions on the logic right but similar way like a withdraw and deposit if we have a function if we have a function called as virus we know that hackers are there right virus are there and can this virus function a third party function or whoever the function is can access this balance can you guess this is it going to access the balance here yes why because global means what visible we are not able to hide the data and that is the very important thing if you go with the actual real life example let's take a bank example right can we get anyone else balance easily is it a public no we will not be able to access it why because that banking application is giving you security and how the security is given by hiding some data and there we are coming with this object oriented programming so that is why object oriented programming concept right where we are going to focus more on the data rather than the functions or the logic okay now when you uh, uh, when rohit is giving my introduction keshav sir is giving my introduction they give the introduction related to me my qualification my experience even when i'm going to introduce myself for this webinar my introduction will be 
my name, my qualification, my years of experience in the technology I conducted. Am I going to give you my salary details here? Am I going to give you my bank balance detail here? How many assets I have? No, not at all. Why? Because it is irrelevant to this current scenario where the, the information about myself I am going to hide. Is it a real life example we are discussing? Correct. Now the same way when we are working with any kind of application where we have to give some uh, accessibility to the user where user can see and some information will be there where the data will be hidden from user that is the end user and how we are going to achieve this here object oriented programming is allowing us or giving us the facility for high for doing all these things data hiding and all which is not possible with the other languages which are not giving the object oriented programming features so let me explain this main principles of object oriented programming languages first is the encapsulation abstraction inheritance and polymorphism what is the encapsulation encapsulation is binding everything in a single module and giving you only the important features may be difficult to understand right so we'll take an example of encapsulation and then we'll relate it with our uh, actual development right now all of you are a student so student specific everything what will be there student specific everything student going to have the data is it every student those who enroll here those who join this meeting all of you are having the name all of you are having the qualifications all of you are having phone number all of you are having email so this is what the data we have so student specific everything data i want to bind i want to put it somewhere yeah and student related functionality will be having with the help of methods and everything we are going to wrap together so how we are going to do here is in object oriented programming we are having the concept called as a classes and that classes are going to help you to bind everything together now to take a real life example the best example that i always take so that you can understand it very easily all of you are having cell phone with you right mobile phone can you tell me how many contains how many components are there inside your cell phone all the exact total number of components but it is there we agree with this processors will be there motherboards will be there battery will be there sensors will be there speakers will be there gadget so many capacitors right electric background student can tell me in detail right but i am a normal user who knows only what how to make a call how to receive a call how to charge the cell phone how to play a song with the help of cell phone that's it so as a end user is it necessary for me to know each and every details about the cell phone or is it necessary to know only how to use the smartphone or how to use the mobile phone second option as a user it is not necessary for me to know the entire detail internal implementation about the cell phone but as a user i must know how to operate the cell phone agree so is it encapsulation hiding binding everything everything in a one rectangular box and all these components all these processors and everything we are using it we are interacting with them by using some functionalities provided 
So this is the encapsulation, which is going to wrap data methods related to that. Okay. So this is what the first pillar, major pillar of object oriented programming is the encapsulation. Fine. Very good. The next is abstraction because both these two, I will take with the help of cell phone example. Abstraction is what showing only the essential thing and hiding the rest of the detail. Right. Okay. Now, as we are taking the example of cell phone, we have a battery inside the cell phone. Yes. Can you see that battery? Can you remove the battery nowadays, whatever the cell phone we are having with us? It is compact, it is inbuilt. So we can't take it out from the cell phone, correct? Now we are taking the current cell phones, right? Smartphones. Okay. Now, do you know how to charge the battery? Are we charging the cell phone battery every day? Yeah, we know that. So, how we are going to do it? With the help of charging point. Every cell phone is giving you the charging point and the charging cable is provided and this charging cable is going to do the charging. Is it? So can I say that when I'm using that charger and the charging cable and all, the indirectly, what I'm going to do I am going to charge the battery. But do I know the process? How the battery, battery charging will be done? Do I know the process? Does it mean being an end user, it is not necessary to know the internal implementation detail. But being a user, I must know how to use it, how to access it. Is it? Right? So that is the abstraction. Showing only the essential thing that is this socket is provided and hiding rest of the internal implementation. So how this battery is going to charge? How fastest it is going to charge? And how electricity is going to be consumed? We don't have to worry about that. What we have to know only the interfaces that the functionality given by this. Okay. Now, how we are going to relate it with the help of, uh, with the development, with the help of digital world. Correct, na? Now, let's take an example that I want to do something related to the student. I want to create a student registration application. So, tell me with whom I am going to work. My options are with patient, right? With card, credit card holders with students or with players for a student registration application with whom i'm going to interact obviously with students so student related everything what will be there in a student related thing student related information yeah information what is the information is it a description about the student? We'll call it as a attributes. In our programming terms, we'll call it as a attributes. So what is that attributes? It is going to have the information about the user who is going to use it. Okay, so I, I'm not going to discuss about the data type and all. We are just going to describe the attributes. Address and qualification. So this is going to be the description. When users are going to interact with my student registration application, obviously, like you fill up the information, your name, your address, your qualification, that's it. Now, what will be the functionality will get provided by student registration application? Exam, right? Something will get processed over there. Result, right? Then mode of payment, installments, right? And all this, everything is going to be wrapped, right? And showing only the essential things is encapsulation 
an abstraction. So this is the encapsulation in our uh, next few minutes. We are going to see how we are going to achieve this. So that is the major pillar of object oriented programming, wrapping of everything, what data and attributes, encapsulation, showing only the essential thing and hiding the implementation detail is the abstraction. So take an example of um, the things which are around you, right? Take example of car. Car is also going to do the encapsulation. The entire engine and everything is getting hidden from us. When we use the accelerator, what happened? Do we know the exact internal implementation key? How the car is getting moved? How the petrol or the fuel is getting consumed by the car engine? Which part is getting moved first? No, we don't know at all. So that is going to hide everything from us, but giving us the, uh, what is that? Accelerator facility through which we can use it. Okay, now, <clears throat> Another major pillar of object-oriented programming is inheritance. What is inheritance? All of you are having hierarchy, your family hierarchy at your um, home. So what is that? It is going to have a relationship. So what it mean by relationship? It is going to create a subtype. Now, which are the earlier languages was there, which was not supporting object-oriented programming. If suppose real life, real life thing, we want to convert into the digital world, into the application world. So that is not possible. But here, if I want to create some kind of hierarchy that, okay, I will have something whose features must get utilized by someone else, whose features must get utilized by someone else. A very simple example. In an inheritance, one features will get utilized by the other. So let's take a real life example. Okay, I'm your trainer for a today, right? Can I get your assets? by mining can i access the facility which you are getting can i get your house on my name yeah i am not part of your family so how can i access your assets is it are you getting all of you so Similar thing in a particular hierarchy, we want to access so that the things we are going to achieve is reusability plus we are going to add some extra feature that is the extensibility. Okay, a very simple example uh, to explain the inheritance. Let me start my video and uh, let me show you one thing. This is a simple water bottle. Yes, it is visible for all of you. And if I'm saying that this is a car, this is a car, will you believe? And now you can see the water bottle in front of you. And I'm just saying that is a car. Agree or not? Yes or no? Agreed or not? Is a car? That bottle is a car? Okay, to check that it is a car or not, what you will see? When I say that is a car, means what? The very first of all, the things comes in your mind is, it must have at least four wheels, right? It must have a steering, it must have doors, it must have engine and rest of the thing. Are you ready? So what I'm doing here is, I'm going to make it as a type of a sub, uh, type of a car, so similar features, equal behavior will be there. For example, all of you and me, we all are humans. Agree or not? Though we don't have a direct relationship with each other, but we all are human. And are we having the same features, same attributes, behaviors, 
everyone is going to have the same one i hope all of you are getting it so that is the benefit that is the benefit of inheritance that you are going to create similar kind of thing okay and polymorphism this is another features of object oriented programming is will break this word word as poly means many and more means form many form of the same thing now take a real life example and then we, you will be able to relate it with the other okay poly means many morph means form many forms of the same thing okay now let's take a example we all are having different gadgets electric gadgets electronic things around us right how you start any electric device how you start any electric device exactly all of you are going to start the button on right on is going to be the functionality to start any electric device or are, are we having any other thing no now tell me if i'm giving tv if i'm starting tv on is the functionality and i have a ac i have a two electronic uh, gadgets around me one is a tv and the second is air conditioner to start both ac and tv i am going to press the on button now tell me one thing though we are not from the electronic backgrounds and uh, we don't have the detail information just tell me one thing are they using the same execution same process to start the electric things tv and ac are tv and ac going to have the same component inside them no not at all ac is having air cooler right tv is having picture tube volume correct na so obviously their process to start the tv and to start the ac is going to be totally different but as a user for the normal user like us are we having the different functionality ki if it is a tv then you have to do one two three steps for starting it and if it is a ac you have to do something four five steps different than the ac than the tv no we just remember on are you getting so that is what is it many form of the same thing polymorphism many form of the same thing so all sub types are going to have the equal behavior with obviously different output so if i pass tv to start tv will get started with the different way and the ac will get started with the different way so that is the polymorphism where we are going to do this polymorphism with the help of concept overloading and overriding you will come to know that when you are going to learn that all this programming languages object oriented programming now when we talk about the basic structure of any object oriented programming this object oriented programming always starts with the classes right because class is going to be acting as a blueprint for individual object attribute and methods now before this maybe those who are having the experience of the other languages like the c language or the other language just tell me one thing if i want to convert a real life entity a real world entity into the software domain how can i convert that real world entity into the software domain where my real world entity is going to have some description going to have some behavior so here in object oriented programming class is the only way of representing a real world entity 
in the software domain and what that real world entity is going to have it is going to have the attributes and methods okay so how you sorry how we are going to relate it with real world so let's take a let's take an example so that you will be able to understand it okay for what reason we are using the class so now let's start with the same one which we want which we discussed earlier i want to use i want to create a banking application so what that bank application is going to have bank application yes account number going to have the account number going to have balance going to have date of creation so creation date information about the account holder that is name address contact number right email rest of the thing all these things will be there is it a description information about that bank account yes or no whenever you are visiting the bank what that bank employee will ask you give the details about your account correct na what are the details your account number account holder name and the other details so that is going to be as a description where you are going to describe so we are going to use the term called as a attributes okay what we are doing with the bank application what operations we are going to perform with the help of bank application so like we discussed earlier we are going to have withdraw withdraw amount right let's suppose i'm not going to bother you about the data types and all right now so some business logic will be here business logic bl for the business logic then i will be having deposit as the functionality where i am going to have some business logic yes we can have money transfer also right where i am going to transfer from one account to the another account of the same bank or of the different bank yes we can have a mini statement bank statement we can have a loan approval and other thing so what are this is it the thing we are expecting from the bank yes what bank must be able to do must be able to give me the withdrawal deposit money transfer mini statement and other functionality and all these our real world entity we are going to write in the software domain with the help of classes okay so all these things related to the bank application we are going to write with the help of class bank so let me give this name access bank whatever the syntax we are not going to focus on the syntax right now con understanding the concept right now you tell me if i go in a bank or you go in a bank and i have a account in hdfc bank will you get my balance easily will you get my balance immediately no and to get my balance what you will require is account number correct now without my account number you will not get the balance you can't ask the balance directly to that bank employees about anyone correct now you are having the secure information and yes here this class as it is encapsulating everything you can hide the data so the main thing here with the help of classes encapsulation and abstraction what we are going to do we are going to specify the scope till what extent the data will be visible to the outer world that is to the end user or the normal user and here uh, uh, shortly we are going to see that we are going to do this with the help of access 
specifiers. So here with programming languages like Java, we have the different access specifiers like private. I will go with the scope wise protected. And the last is wider scope public. So like all of you come to know uh, about my name, right? My first name, my last name, which is public. Everyone can get this name. But you will not be able to know the information about my salary. Why? Because it is hidden. And the things which I want to hide will be having with the help of private scope. Right? We'll see that. Okay. So that is the one thing that I'm going to hide and unhide. Now, how this money transfer occur, how the withdrawal occur, how the deposit occur, how the mini statement get generated or whatever the other bank operations are we aware with that? Are we aware with that? No. As a normal user, is it hidden from us? Is that implementation is hidden from us? Yes. And how it is going to do with the help of, if we are going to consider it is a software domain, this is done with the help of methods. You can call it as the functions, which going to implement the behavior. So yes, obviously, the classes we are writing, we are writing means what? Is it defined by the developer, defined by the user? Yes. So this is the user defined data type, which acts as the blueprint for individual object creation, which is having the attributes and methods. So like we discussed, bank account is going to have the description all this account number, balance and date. I'm going to have the behavior, functionality, the rest of the thing, withdraw, deposit, mini, mini statement and all. Now, how we are going to use it? That is the point. If we are going to convert the real world entity into the software domain with the help of class, how we are going to use it, right? So here, these classes are get accessed, are get used by the objects. This is nothing but the real entity, which we are going to consider as an object in the software domain, which is nothing but the instance of the class created with the specifically defined data. Right? Okay. Now, when you go inside the bank and you want to open a new account. So what you are going to do here is we are creating objects. And what that object, that object is going to be of the type access bank. Let's suppose Ram want to open a new account. So Ram is going to acquire what behavior can Ram is going to have account number. Ram is going to have the account holder name. Ram is going to have the address, cell number, and Ram is going to acquire the functionality given by the bank, withdraw, deposit, mini statement, rest of the thing. So here, objects are going to be the instance of the classes created with specifically defined data. Objects can correspond to the real world object or an abstract entity. And when class is defined initially, the description is only the object that is defined. We see the methods also. These are nothing but the functions that are defined inside the class that describes the behavior of the object. So what is the behavior of this RAM object here? If I say the RAM is the object, RAM Description is here, attribute and behavior. RAM can withdraw amount, RAM can deposit amount, RAM can do the money transfer, RAM can do the mini statement. Right? So that is the behavior. So all these things are the contents, the components you can say of the object oriented programming. So classes, objects, methods and attributes. Okay. 
now you might be thinking ki okay we got the concept object oriented programming where we can encapsulate everything all the real world thinking now we can process we can convert into the software domain with the help of concept um encapsulation abstraction polymorphism and inheritance then we have so many languages okay earlier in c++ object oriented programming is introduced right java is also object oriented programming so obviously the question will be if c++ is doing the object oriented programming then why java isn't it why to go for the java if already c++ is there with the object oriented programming so the very uh, important or the basic features provided by java is that's it platform independent programming language what it mean platform independent programming language write once write once run anywhere irrespective of the operating system irrespective of the machine on which you are going to run it is it mean that i can create a java program on my machine yes and can you execute it on your machine maybe linux maybe mac or maybe windows os maybe any other yes and that is the main basic feature of java we have is the platform independent it is not totally dependent on the os so that is wora you can say w o r a write once run anywhere so that is the uh, main functionality of this it is going to give you the portability yes such in case similar to the c++ in syntax those who are already aware with the c or c++ program uh, programming for them it will be a very short learning curve very easily you will be adopted to the java because most of the syntaxes are similar like a c++ syntaxes no um, any other new syntaxes major syntaxes introduced basic all syntaxes of c++ are there in a java and supports object oriented as well as functional programming okay so that is the benefit and like i discuss platform independence this um, diagram will explain you what it mean by platform independent what it means today i created a java file right and you know that every programming language will get compiled will get executed by their respective language compiler and what is the task of the compiler <coughs> compiler convert the programming instructions that is the source code into the native code or you can call it as a machine code right this happens let's take a example of c or c++ programming so every language compiler is going to compile it based on their requirement based on their instructions into the machine specific language and that was giving you the platform dependency now what new thing added in a java if you compile java source code that is the dot java file java compiler that is the java c is not directly converting it to the machine generated language that is the native code it is not converting into the native code instead of that it is converting it into the byte code what is that byte code it is an architecture neutral file format transport code efficiently independent of hardware and os right so that compiler java compiler converting that source code that is the dot java file into the dot class file and this is write once right this dot class file you can use on any os whether it is a mac or linux or windows or any other os so who is going to take care of executing that dot class file 
on that particular os that responsibility is taken by the jvm that is the java virtual machine which is running your dot class file on respective os so here one point to note java is platform independent where jvm is platform dependent so yes windows specific jvm will be different linux specific java virtual machine will be there and mac specific java virtual machine is there okay so this is the execution of java program right there are some other features which are more interesting and might be you will like this like java is statically type language i will show you that what is a statically type language we have two types of language statically type language and dynamic language so statically type language now maybe if you are having the background of c or c++ programming where we are worried about the complex concept pointers memory management garbage values dangling references dangling pointers right all these things are not used in a java so there is automatic garbage collection you don't have to worry about destroying the memory allocated by the program you don't have to write anything to destroy the thing in java automatic memory management is given that is the one feature interesting feature we have second thing is what it simplifies the pointers no directly accessible pointer to the memory in short pointers are not supported in a java so we don't have to worry about how to access the memory then dangling pointer memory references all these complex things are totally removed from the java and the third fourth sorry important interesting feature is multi threading what is a multi threading parallel execution of the program right so more than one program more than one process we are going to run at the same time which is going to improve the performance your of your application so that we are having uh, features of java okay so now that is all about the features and what is the java now what type of applications i can create with the help of java what type of application this is a simple application like your c c++ programming console is there you are giving the input you are getting the output yeah console based application i can create yes can i create a desktop application stand alone application gui based application yes what is that stand alone application desktop application gui based application take a look at this notepad this is a stand alone gui based application okay so notepad is the gui based application stand alone application i can create a gui based application then can i create a web based application what it means web based application all of you are using facebook amazon right you are doing online shopping you are visiting so many websites every day right now these are the web applications web based application where the business logic is not running on your machine right have you installed anything to access the facebook from the browser i'm talking about the web application and nowadays we have apps that is a mobile apps or the different apps we have i'm talking about whenever you are opening the browser and you are writing uh, amazon or anything else over there so here when you are typing the url let's suppose this on this is the java created website do you have to install anything no you just have to open the browser that's it and the things will get executed things you will get available on your machine facebook 
Amazon. These are the best example of the web applications, right? So can I access, can I create, sorry, can I create this type of application using Java? Yes, means what? Console application, web-based application, desktop application. I can create a digital and electronic devices also. Games and animations also. Mobile applications also. Distributed applications also. Web services also. And cloud-based applications also. Right? So, Java is giving you the platform for creating such type of different types of applications. Okay? Now, are we having the different mathematical operators here? No, not at all. All the basic mathematical operator will be there as it is. Right? With their respective meanings. Relational operators, we are going to see the demo of this. Don't worry. Um, what is going to be here? Relational operator. Relational operator will remain are there as it is then are we going to have the different programming constructs no not at all that's why i said it is going to be a very short learning curve for the cc plus plus programmer to understand java to learn java because basic <clears throat> syntax and all remains same okay now we'll see all this thing structure, statement, and all. See, these are the different programming constructs that we can see, okay? So best way, let's have a demo on this so you all will be able to understand this, okay? Now, here, you can create so many um, different ways are there for creating the Java application. For that, you can have different editors, different IDE, different tools for creating Java application. Even why to go with the tools? Once you install Java, you can create it with the help of Notepad also. But the fastest development will be done with the help of IDE. So you can have any one of IDE. Either you can have an Eclipse or you can use the STS. Okay, so right now I have a STS tool with me which I can use for creating a Java application. Now, very first thing that we observe in a Java, I how to create it, I will show you. After creating a project, you just have to add a class. Yes, everything here will be encapsulated in the form of class. So let's suppose I'm giving the name of the class like test basics of Java and you all know that every program need a entry point. From C, we learn that every program is going to have the entry point from where the execution will start and that is going to be the main function. From here, the execution is going to start. So programming language different different languages with their different different syntax with the different different grammar purpose is same so if you are using c programming in c programming you use printf and you use scanf functionality scanf functions right in c plus plus you just shifted means as it is going to give you the object oriented programming language there we come across with the object. Yeah, it is object. C in and C out. If you go with the other programming language, they will have their own way to print and to read and to write. So when we are going to work with Java, how will write the data? As it is object oriented programming, we have some classes with some functionality okay and what i want to print here is something like the basic we always have in every programming welcome to java that's it that is the benefit of this editor eclipse and sts that is auto compilation mode is there 
which is on and auto compilation means what at the moment you write the program you write the code it will show you the errors compile time errors and are you getting that this is going to give you the compile time error because as per the syntax as per the rule of this java programming language semicolon must be there to make the termination of the line right and as i'm missing it the compiler is giving me the error auto compiled that is the fastest development you can have here now that's it execute the program run and you will not get the black window or anything different here in this editor it is getting displayed here the different different editors the way they render will be different okay so this is what i am getting the output now this is for writing if i want to read the data how i can read the data right so this is a object oriented programming language and java is giving you so many ready made classes okay so many ready made classes are grouped together based on their functionality so somewhere you maybe come across with the concept called as header files right similarly here in java we are having the packages concept and we are going to mention i am going to use java given package util related utility functionality util class scanner java package util scanner class what is this it is giving the information to the compiler ki scanner class will come from this path right and that scanner we can use this is a class so you just have to create the object of the class and this is the syntax for creating this now the constructor and all the things will be here so right now we'll not focus on this this is a simple class that we have and this class is doing the encapsulation of so many methods i don't have to worry about how it is going to read it from the user as a user normal user i am just going to take the data from the console so in short if you are going to use right if you are going to read the data from the console use a scanner class if i'm going to take the data from the file we have a different sources from where i can get the data i can get it from the keyboard or i will get it from the file or tomorrow i can get it from the database depending on the um, source from where i'm getting the data my classes will be different so right now i just want to take it data from the user it is giving me the function and now guys as a end user who created a scanner i haven't created it java given me right java given me this scanner class okay so this scanner class help me to read the data from the user yes akash to take the inputs from the user we are going to use this so this scanner class is going to help me right to read this as a user do i have to worry about ki how the keyboard data will be taken in what type of streams byte stream or buffer stream or whatever and how it is going to store no i don't have to worry i just have to know that how to read that's it so next int function is giving me the functionality where the implementation detail is hidden yes or no is it hiding that internal implementation detail from end user right now i am a end user who is using someone else created business logic right okay so i don't have to worry about that fine i'll take two inputs so 
so guys yes obviously two functions you have to read using a one function you cannot read the more than one value okay so i just to give the information to the user key yes enter number 1 and number 2 that's it. you have to prompt the user properly and now tell me is it different than your c++ programming i'm going to make the addition of two numbers that's it and the output i want to print this is the shortcut i'm using to write that system dot out dot print ln this is what i'm going to print the data look at this code is it different i agree reading and writing is totally different than c++ but working with the variables basic operations that we are performing logical operators that we are putting mathematical operators is it different no not at all only the thing i have to understand okay how to read it and how to write it okay fine let's try to execute it i don't have to compile it explicitly yes it is running now and i'm just giving a two numbers where the addition is going to be done now can i go with the programming constructs other programming constructs i just want to find out which is going to be the bigger number or smaller number is it my logic to check whether the number is bigger or smaller max and min sorry so the bigger number will be in number 1 here okay so this is the conditional if statement we have if condition which is going to check this one is bigger number 1 is bigger or number 2 bigger right now true part will get execute and if the number is not bigger obviously the second number is going to be the bigger so that is the false part it is going to execute so max is equal to your number 2 is it okay so i'm going to enter number 1 12 number 2 45 my mistake condition operator less than greater than we have to put it properly so are you ready so is it the same like a c c++ programming programming constructs how you can write the program over there if else if else if else if so and so on you can have similar way you can have the programming constructs repetitive execution while loop so you can give the condition while number 1 less than equal to 10 what we are going to have here is number 1 and obviously you have to increment right so this is how incrementing the value of number let's suppose number 1 is equal to 1 because it must satisfy my while condition okay so are you waiting 1 to 10 number repetitive execution yes so the same programming constructs we have here if with the one statement with a block of statement with the single statement if and the false part right so you can have you can have a switch statement also it is going to replace your nested if switch same concept you can have the loop here you can have loop over here for looping purpose repetitive execution repetitive code we are going to execute here with the help of loop okay and so we can have a while loop for loop and do while loop okay so we'll see how to use for loop while loop for loop both are used for the same purpose but the difference is that in a while loop you just have to put the condition 
print the business logic, execute the business logic, and you just have to write the um, increment or decrement. So totally you will require the expression one, expression two, and expression three. But when you go with the for loop, expression one, expression two, that is assignment, condition, increment or decrement, all will be in a one line and the block of code will get executed. So the same thing, if I want to convert into the for loop, right? So let's have Let's have the declaration about the for loop. Okay, so how you can use this form uh, for loop? <clears throat> See, this is my expression one where I'm going to do the assignment. This is the expression two where we are doing the conditional checking. And this is the compulsion uh, expression three and all. Okay, so for variable assignment, condition till what and the increment or decrement by how many numbers okay so this is going to give you the this is going to print the numbers right i used it on the same line okay yeah you can use no one is equal to one or i use a different variable so this is what the output of your for loop is it different than this one? Yeah, I put it on the same line. Here also I can put it on the same line. Why to print it on the number of lines? You can print it on the same lines also. So see, everything is very easy. Okay, so the output of for loop is the same as output of a while loop. Only the simplicity is given. Okay, so all the expressions you can write in a one. Is it? Similar way, you can go with the switch case, do while loop, all the things. Okay, now, here in a Java, <clears throat> like the other programming language also, we have the arrays. And you all know that array going to be the list of similar thing. So, which have the fixed name, type and length. So array is going to be created in a memory where the element will get accessed by the index. Yes. Let's suppose today all student information I want to store together at a one place. I don't have to uh, take care of the different identifiers. Everything I will do in a identifying by a single location, one location. Okay. So we are going to create an array array of similar types array of similar types yeah it is just a uh, introductory part Neeraj. okay so array is going to be creating the collection of similar type for example here i want to create i want to create I want to store 10 student marks. So obviously I will require the 10 variables and that is going to be too much complicated to remember the names and all identifier names I'm talking about. So what we can do here is create an array, right? Name of the array. And you are going to specify the size of the array. How many elements you want to store, you are going to mention it. So what happened? In memory, in memory, 
the memory is going to be allocated for five integers. One, two, three, four, and five. Right. And this entire memory will get identified by the single variable ARR array. How many numbers it is going to store? It is going to store the numbers, five numbers. So they will get identified by the index. So what I'm writing here is index. And in Java, like the other programming also, index starts at zero. All the elements are accessed by their index. So I'm going to store some value. Let's suppose my first number is 45. First number will get placed at index 0. Second number, let's suppose second number is 25. Third number is 70. Fourth number, any random number I'm taking here. As this is the marks of the student I'm storing. So these are all my students' mark. Okay. And these values we are going to access by the index. So when I set that zeroth index value, what I will get? I will get 45. One index value, I will get. 25 and so on. So I don't have to worry about what data I store. I will just take care of the indexes to retrieve the data. Okay, so let's see how the arrays are working here. Okay, now first element programmatically we are going to store like this. First element 0, second element I'm giving the random number, third element, sorry, third element, fourth element, programmatically also you can do, no issue, but this is just a, we are going to assign statically and for example, uh, index of three and array. Okay, uh, one more feature of Java is robust. Error handling is done in a Java. What is that error handling? If suppose your code is not correct, syntactically compiler will take care. Programmatically, if it is not correct, like number you are going to divide by zero. Is it possible to divide any number by zero? No. So you will get an error. Exception handling is given. Early detection of error cell is also given by Java. Okay, so these are all my five elements. I'm storing it in a one row that is ARR. And now I'm going to show all the elements from array. How I'm going to show it? Step by step, one by one also. Or I have a loop. Loop are going to make your work, make your code more simpler, more easy, more shorter. So I'm going to iterate array. I know that index starts with the zero. So I variable specifically, spatially, I am taking for the index as equal to zero. Then till what we are going to check the number from the array. Till what? One, two, three, four. Till my array index is less than equal to four. I can give five also. Four less than five, yes. And increment that variable i. And print it. This is how print ln next line. Print on the same line print on the same line to give the spacing between these two. I use that space double quotes 
and this is what i am going to find out my first element second element and so on how array of zero what value you are having at array of zero you will get this value array of one what value you are having you will get this and so on okay so these are the uh, ways how we are going to iterate through the array and we are going to read and write the element for the array okay so just to show you that it is the output of the array are you ready array elements as it is in which order i added see zero index one index two index three index and four index you will get at the same but suppose i try to retrieve i try to retrieve the element at fifth index fifth index means what sixth element i have do i added have i added the array of five no because i said that the size of array capacity of array is to hold only five elements i will not be able to store the sixth element inside that and see here obviously you are going to get the error exception proper exception handling is done and what that exception handling it is giving you the exception that array index out of bounds exception you try to retrieve the element at index 5 which is not there because array size is fixed you cannot change the size of array and once you declare the size of array is 5 0 to 5 maybe one element maybe two element maybe three you can store but not greater than 5 six element you cannot store <coughs> so this is what we are having the limitation of the array that array size is fixed but in a java we are having the collection so java is introducing collection and in that collections we are having the facility of dynamically growing array dynamically i will not say it as a array dynamically growing collections means what if i want to add one more element in a collection yes so collections will help you whatever the limitations of your array was having you can overcome it with the help of collections by using dynamically growing collection or shrinking means you can add or you can remove and you can manipulate the data okay so this is about the basic what i will say basic programming structure every program is starting with the reading writing if for all the things okay so that is going to be the basic what new thing we have see these are all, all the things how we are going to iterate through that what new thing we have in java like we have that in a uh, c++ also apart from the basic programming structure here as we are in a object oriented programming we are having the concept called as a class and objects okay so these basic basic programming constructors loops conditions basic programming constructs for switch case do while will be there in every program how we are going to implement that object oriented programming in a java it is done with the help of class okay so let me introduce you the very important thing that we have we can do it with the help of ja uh, with the help of java that is object oriented programming using the classes so don't worry about that structure and all okay let's focus whatever we discuss will create it bank account shall i give access bank Best name for the banking application, right? 
now i am going to create a bank application and now you will uh, will get that flavors of or the magic of data hiding abstraction encapsulation everything okay now this is a class opening and closing going to do the encapsulation going to specify the scope of the content okay there i am going to declare something as a private right account number i am going to declare it as a private then i am going to declare a string account holder name and i am going to declare balance as a private private means what hidden is it private means what you cannot see it so can i say that cell phone is going to have the battery which is hidden from us can we see the uh, battery directly can we get it can we touch it directly no so that is hidden okay what operations you can perform here yeah i can perform the operation of withdraw you tell me the amount how much amount you want to withdraw like atm machines are accepting asking amount for, from us correct na how much you want to withdraw okay so that amount is going to be withdraw from the balance <clears throat> right so that is going to withdraw and i'll just give the like the atm machine is giving me that your current balance is current balance after withdrawal surely the current balance is balance okay similar way similar way will be having the function called as deposit okay and deposit is going to have the amount after withdraw and this is after that's it okay two things are public two things two not two exactly three things this is what a description attributes and this is what the behavior methods how you will make the differentiation between the attributes and behaviors let's take a example of car how you will describe the car color model make type of fuel correct that comes under the description model number color of the car right version of the car you can say or the type of fuel diesel version or the petrol version or how you are yeah company also there how what you are expecting from the car speed performance so that will be inside the methods speed mileage performance average okay and this is going to be the description i hope the things are clear okay i encapsulate it everything in a single module that is the class everything i binded i hide inside the class and i will show you the magic it is not exactly magic there is a logic behind this someone created a class bank application and i am going to the consumer user of that bank i'm trying to open the bank account inside that so someone is going to use my bank application see here which was that ram like we earlier discussed okay we have to follow some rules that is the rule for creating the object don't worry about this one ram is the object of the class bank and see here is ram that object outside the class able to access account number name 
and balance is it visible outside the class have we hide our data is it visible outside the class surely not right have we hide the data yes how we hide the data by mentioning it as a private and as we declare it as a private the data is hidden but as soon as i make it as a public <coughs> i just try to make it as a public means what <coughs> data security is not given data security is not given any one can see it are you getting this is what data hiding and unhiding now depending on the application requirement you decide you means you developers are going to decide whether it will be private or it will be public are you getting it so this is done with the help of access specifiers and these access specifiers tell you the scope of the data member whether you can access it outside the class inside the hierarchy or inside the class only so here in a java we have typically access specifiers like public private okay we'll go with the scope private protected and public so abstraction is going to do hiding the internal implementation detail yes showing only the essential things yes data hiding yes encapsulation everything in a single unit so that we are going to access here okay now if i'm going to do withdraw or deposit withdraw amount 1000 Have I assigned a balance to the RAM? Have I assigned any balance? No. We haven't assigned any balance to RAM. Will I get the garbage value? Let's see. If I'm not assigning the value, <clears throat> right? If it is my other type of programming, it must give me the garbage value, but it is not given me. because java compiler is going to take care of that assigning the values when the object is getting created as per the data type values will get assigned so the balance data type is double <coughs> default values are getting assigned as a 0.0 one benefit of java here is we will never get the garbage value <coughs> okay now as nothing is getting assigned how i can assign it first i need to assign the information about that so here we are going to take care, take the help of some methods which will allow to assign the values for example set name these are the functions we are going to use for assigning the values okay then when i'm going to open the account over there set balance right and the balance i'm going to set here with the help of balance is equal to amount with the help of methods right these methods are the interfaces listen carefully these methods are the interfaces through which we can assign the values to the private data members so yes those who are aware with this concept this is called as a getter setter mutator right so right now no name given just a facility facility given through which you can set the name okay ram is the object so i'll just give okay same name will give ram 
run dot set balance you decide what is the balance ram is giving you can take it from the user also i just make it as a hard coded and now you are going to do the withdraw now tell me one thing that 1000 withdrawal will be done on which amount are we accessing the balance directly here outside you cannot access the balance 50000 here directly where it is going to be access inside the withdraw function you just given the amount to withdraw 10000 are given that withdraw is going to use ram balance like if suppose you and me both are having the account in a access bank and i did withdraw of 10000 rupees from whose account will get it will it get withdraw from my account or from your account if i want to withdraw a amount from my account so i given my account number for withdrawal obviously it will get withdraw from my account not your account so the person the object who is responsible for calling it his balance will be used over there to withdraw let's see are you getting ram balance was 50000 money is getting withdraw can i have more than one object of the same type like you and me we all are the objects of the human types right so let's create a one more object more than one account holder will be there right let's suppose sham okay this is a part of syntax where the objects are getting created on the heap memory is getting allocated right and sham dot set balance so sham is going to have the balance 70000 and then sham is going to do some withdraw operation sham is going to do some withdraw operation of uh, 1000 rupees so tell me what will be the balance of sham after withdrawing the amount will it get deducted from 50000 or will it get deducted from 70000 whose balance is going to be checked sham balance right so have we given security to our data ram cannot access sham balance sham cannot access the ram balance and yes 69000 the amount you will get over here where the amount is going to be withdraw from the sham account okay so have we convert our real life application requirement into the software domain with the help of this kind of programming with the help of classes yes have we make the security have we given the security have we make our data secure so that this balance or the other attributes also are not visible to the outside world these are going to be totally hidden from the other world yes have we make our data secure yes now one more access specifier here we have let's suppose protected yes vaishnavi this is the developer code and this is the tester code tester uh, the user code okay so no need that everything was must be in a single file you can split it across the file which you can make it more clear more modular and this is going to be the client code right what the client code is having is it having any implemented business logic in it no client need to create the object and invoke the function that's it so this is the encapsulation we have access bank class is going to encapsulate what 
it is encapsulating it is encapsulating data members and the methods data members and the methods in a one yes encapsulation then it is going to give the abstraction it is going to do the abstraction abstraction means what showing only the essential thing withdraw withdraw similar way deposit also you can do okay it is going to give you the abstraction showing only the essential thing and hiding the rest of the detail have it hide the implementation detail about the withdraw i'm just taking a very simple example deposit even i can go with the money transfer also the business logic is totally hidden now like vaishnavi asked it is is it mandatory to write in the same package no not at all like earlier i use scanner class and that scanner class is not coming from our own package you can have it with the different package also okay so across that outside this java application also you can use it okay by creating the um, jar files of that okay so not necessary that it must be in a one package you can split it across the package the concept is reusability same business logic we are reusing for the different object and all these objects are going to have the similar behavior because they are of the same type have a look here ram and sham these all are the objects of the same type access bank are they getting the same behavior are they having the same functionality yes so these are going to be the um, objects of all the uh, all the different objects of the same type which is going to have the which is going to acquire the same behavior now what happened when you created object of that bank account what we created is access bank ram is the object right and this is the syntax immediately what happened object ram is getting created on the stack right and where the values will get created it is going to allocate the memory on heap for what it is going to allocate the memory on the heap it is going to allocate the memory like account number going to allocate the memory for name and going to allocate the memory for balance right and when you are going to call the function what ram dot set balance as uh, something like 50000 i guess 50000 we given so that balance attribute which is initially assigned as a zero will get overwrite by 50000 so here the constructors are playing the important role of initializing the data members what is the constructor these are the special methods which are used for default initialization of data members we haven't seen that constructor we'll see it okay now what happen when sham another object of the access bank is getting created okay this is going to call the constructor default values will get assigned memory will get allocated yes so sham right then memory will get allocated and that memory will get allocated for the attributes which is that attribute account number name and balance right and when we assign default will be zero default constructor going to assign it and when we are going to make it balance as 60000 i guess right so the 60000 will get assigned here so that when you are going to call ram dot withdraw ram balance will get access because that reference 
address is hold in this variable Ram. So Ram is going to be the object of the class which is holding the memory reference where the values are getting stored on the heap. So whichever the object responsible for calling the method, their attributes values will get access. Clear so far? Okay, so this is how we are going to create a similar type of the same with the help of objects, creating the class to convert the real world entity into the software domain. That is going to have the attributes and going to have the behavior. Data hiding we did here with the help of methods and that we are going to call by creating the objects. Okay, now here we don't have to, I don't have to worry about destroying the memory allocated by the object because in a Java, there is a special class, special person, specially allocated, specially appointed for releasing the memory. So once I finish the execution of this program, once I close my program, right? Immediately the garbage collector will come and will check that, okay, these are two objects. Are they accessible by the, by the application? No. These two objects are not accessible by the application. If I finish with the working of my main function, so they are marked as a garbage and garbage collector will remove it from the memory. So you don't have to write the code to destroy the memory allocated by the object. So that is the one benefit or the features you can say given by the Java. Another important concept here with the help of class we have called as a constructor. What that constructor is going to do, it is going to assign some default value. So it is nothing but the special member function whose name is same as the class name. Whose name is same as the class name. Okay, how I will come to know that the constructor get execute or not? Constructor. Okay, and some default value I will assign. What default value? Let's suppose while opening the account, default balance is the 10,000. By default, you must have the minimum 10,000 in your account. So as soon as this code is getting executed, as soon as the code is getting executed, implicitly constructor will get called. What I said is automatically, implicitly. So that is the benefit of the constructor to assign default value to initialize member variable. So as many objects I'm going to create, that many times the constructor will get executed. Have a look here. Line number nine output is this. Right? Okay. Now see the beauty of this constructor. I am going to create access bank for, let's suppose, Nita. And Nita is going to open the account. Now, last time I was getting a zero when I haven't assigned the value to the balance, right? And if Nita is going to do the withdraw or a deposit of, let's suppose, 2000, this time I will not get minus 2000. Zero minus 2000, I will not get it. Why? Because when this object is getting created, yes, implicitly the constructor automatically will get called. And when the constructor is getting called, Nita balance will be 10,000. Earlier, if you don't write the constructor, this is going to be the zero because compiler created its own constructor. And yes, Akash, correct. When 2000 is going to be withdraw from the Nita's account, you will get the balance as a 8000. So that is the benefit of the constructor that we have for the default initialization 
of data members okay so this is going to be the default initialization of a data member so you can have many more thing we can do here with the help of java for example this is a simple basic uh, we seen if suppose tomorrow my data is coming from the file so can i handle can i do the file handling can java application read the data from the file answer is yes furthermore if i want to take the data from the database means if my data is coming from the database can i get this data from the database yes your jdbc <coughs> java database connectivity will help you for doing this okay so many more things you can do here multi threading you can do here lots of things interesting things are there that you can do with the help of java but this is a basic thing means is it that much difficult to write the code in java no is it having a very difficult concept no it is having the concept object oriented programming where real uh, life thinking the things easily we can convert into the software domain in a digital domain okay a uh, lots of reasons are there vaishnavi behind this because uh, see um, here every method every method which is belonging to the class we have to call using the object but as the part of um, java coding is everything you have to write inside the class so i am writing my main method inside the class so how i will give an information to the compiler ki this is going to be my startup code will not require the instance of the class because static method never requires the instance so this is giving information to the execution engine ki test bank test access bank is going to have main method which is a startup object that's why static main is there okay so just to have the startup code get set getters and setters get reading set assigning neeraj okay now uh, you might be thinking that what will be the benefit of java to have the best career to get the best job what will be the opportunities correct na so over the year there has been a tremendous increase in the number of java applications and websites we know that okay and because of this lots of requirements are there and you should have these skills so the only means to sustain in the cutthroat competition is by upgrading your skills upgrading your java skills so the programmers are required to have a comprehensive knowledge of java to attain the to get the top level jobs okay so you should have the basic skill sets of java like a core java then you can upgrade yourself for data centric application for jdbc furthermore if you want to go for the web applications you want to create websites right client server applications you want to create you can go with the j2ee framework you can go with the uh, jsp right java server pages you can create you can improve your skill set by adding java based web services where rest apis and all supports will be given in addition you can increase your skill set by adding spring hibernate spring mvc spring core and many more so that's all about the career in java so which is going to give you the lots of opportunities if you have these all types of skill sets okay that's it guys so if anyone having any questions doubt you can ask
Mamta setters means to assign the value to the data members, and getters means to retrieve the values. Like uh, if you have an account on Amazon, and after some days you want to change your address, you want to change your contact number, you want to change your email address. So that we are going to do with the help of setters, modifying the data members, assigning the values to the data members. Static void main going to tell the execution engine that the class which contains static void main will be the main entry point. For example, Smita. If I'm going to remove this static keyword, compiler is not going to give me the any error. But when I ask compiler or the execution to run it, I will get the error because the execution engine, see here, the exception is given, is not able to get the proper main method. Now it becomes an instance method. You require the object and where you will create the object. So to make the code as a starter, a main entry point, public accessibility scope outside you must be 